Welcome in. In this video, Joel and I are going to be giving you our top 10 favorite games. One of the best gaming experiences of my life has been playing through Gloomhaven over the last five years. It is truly the perfect massive dungeon crawl, overarching story, RPG character development. But there's a classic game that I actually think holds up just a little bit better than it. And that's the game of life. In the game of life, you start as a young person coming maybe before college, and then you get to venture through. You're building your career, having a family or not having a family, growing huge wealth or maybe not. And you have to kind of deal with the consequences of life as they're thrown at you. I just think it's a really realistic, powerful story experience that, I don't know, I connect with more than the whole fantasy realm of something like Gloomhaven. Over the last year or so, I've been introduced to a really cool game called Ark Nova. Ark Nova has a great feeling of building up your own little empire. I know it's a zoo, but it feels like your own little empire. You're getting structures and putting them into your zoo in the right spots and acquiring animal cards, which go into particular structures. The only real complaint I have about the game is it often ends in fights and people just angry at each other. So I was trying to find a game that gave me the same experience, but just a lot less hurt feelings. And it dawned on me, the game I'm looking for has actually existed for almost a hundred years. And that game, of course, is Monopoly. And Monopoly offers you some of the really cool decisions to trying to build up your empire. Like, you know, do I want to acquire this color, this color here and kind of combine properties together to make them more powerful, but it just does it with a lot less hurt feelings. I mean, I'm trying to think of the last time I've ever played Monopoly where people end it in a bad mood. It's just a much more fun experience. As I'm sure is true for many of you out there, Pandemic was the game that got me into board games. And while it was great for a few years, I think there was a classic medical game that really stood the test of time a lot better. And that, of course, is Operation. You see, the problem with Pandemic is that it's super abstract. You're just traveling around this world, moving these disease cubes around. But Operation is so up close and personal. You look at the patient in the eye that you're taking care of. You see his injuries and you gotta pull the pieces out and protect him. And it is, it's so punishing to mess it up because it teaches you the value and the precision required to really perform an operation like that. So I think Pandemic, it'll be gone in a few years, but Operation, it's always gonna be there and it has always stood superior to Pandemic. I've always loved dudes on the map go out and conquer stuff games. And really the best one of all time has to be Risk. What really makes Risk special more than anything else is that you're not really dealing with small local conflicts or made up stories, but you get out, you get to go out and conquer the entire world. That feels so good. But on top of that, another really cool feature of Risk is that it's so universal. I mean, you can do Risk with any theme you want to. Think of a game like, like War of the Rings, for example. War of the Rings, yeah, there's, there's some cool stuff going on. You get the Lord of the Rings universe and you get like, you know, the different species and stuff going on. But, but the game is kind of stuck. Like you're kind of stuck in the Lord of the Rings universe. But think of Risk. Risk has been adapted to everything. I mean, the game doesn't have to be in a particular conflict. It works for any conflict you want it to work for. Dune seems to be for everyone. There's movies, there's a book, and there are multiple board games about it. But for me, Dune Imperium is the game. I love it. But I have found myself going back to a classic that I think does one of the core parts of the games better. You see, in Dune Imperium, there are these four or five factions, and you need to be moving up the tracks to get certain benefits and perks along the way. But there's a classic game, I'm sure it's already come to mind, that does tracks a lot better. Candyland. Candyland doesn't have this weight of having all these tracks. It did it all with one track, and it offers a lot more variety in gameplay. And the events that happen on the board are so much more wild. Like, typically in Dune Imperium, yeah, you might get a resource, you might get a soldier, or, like, get an extra ability you can use, right? I mean, that's cool. Great game. But, like, in Candyland, like, you can be thrown to another spot on the board. You could lose, like, tons of things or gain tons of things. There's, like, the variety in gameplay just like outshine something like Dune. Now I got to admit when I first played Star Wars Rebellion, it was one of my favorite types of these games. It makes Star Wars Rebellion unique. It is two player only. And one person is out there kind of hiding somewhere in the Star Wars universe, right? It's a cool two player kind of head to head strategic thing where I try to figure out what the other person's going to do. It didn't quite displace my favorite game of this genre, which is definitely Battleship. Like when you start to game a battleship, you have no clue where your opponent put their ships. And you really have no way of figuring it out except systematically guessing the entire grid. And what's really fun about it is when you first start out, you often don't want to leave too big of gaps in between the guesses because it could have a small little two size ship that you happen to miss. But you know, you could also kind of try your odds and go for like scattered around the boards. I've played games of people who I thought I really outsmarted them, but they knew something because they just kind of randomly shot shots around the entire grid. And they just happened to hit my ship and all you gotta do is make one of those random shots hit and you have the winning edge. 
For about 10 years now, I have seen code names popping up in board gaming houses, but also just houses of everyday people. It's in Target. Seems like everyone is playing code names, but actually, I think there's a word game that came a little bit earlier, actually a lot earlier, that holds up a lot better, and that's Scrabble. Scrabble is cool because while code names kind of limits you to like the cards that are in the box, Scrabble lets you build any word you want, and even some words that may not be in the English dictionary, but they find themselves in the Scrabble dictionary. So what's really fun is like you're planning at someone, and they just whip out a word. It's like, oh, that's not a real word, and they pull out the Scrabble dictionary like yeah it is or maybe you have different Scrabble dictionaries I just think that's fun because it makes a really dynamic experience where you never know what the rules are quite when you sit down and that's just really fun up next we're talking pure strategy games you and your opponent in the head-to-head -head battle of the minds games like chess games like checkers games like Chinese checker things that are kind of associated with brilliance and intelligence but today I'm talking about the best of the best tic-tac-toe the thing that makes tic-tac-toe so amazing is that once you and your opponent know the game pretty well most rounds are going to end in stalemate. So it's not about individual particular rounds, but it's more about the massive ginormous war of attrition. Like if you play enough rounds, eventually you or your opponent is going to have a mental lapse. You make a dumb mistake that you would never make just on a quick three minute round, but you play long enough. You're waiting for that mistake your opponent makes and you pounce on it and you win that round. It's hard to come back from that. Once you're down this game, most games, if your opponent plays at the highest level, they're going to be able to tie you from then on out. So you can never lose a single game. The intensity when you play tic-tac-toe over an hour, over two hours, over three hours. It's like nothing matched by any board game I've ever played in my life. Ticket to Ride is a game that is becoming a modern family classic. I feel like I see it in every household. And when I think about it and what classic classic would really replace it, I come up empty. I mean, it is really the perfect game. Like, I love how the cards come out randomly so you never know what cards you're going to get in your hand and how you're given a route that you could go do and pursue or you could just go build the longest tracks and not even do your routes. And that's like a great strategy too. It offers a wide variety of gameplay, really fun interactions between you and the other players on the board. And I wouldn't change a thing. It's perfect. As you probably have noticed throughout this video, Joel and I have been going back and forth. This is our collective mental powers coming together to give you the ultimate 10 best games, which makes our number one game pretty unique because we talked about it and we decided that, you know, this game was so good. We couldn't just put it in the list once, but it had to be in here twice. Our number one game has already appeared once, but it's so good. It deserves to appear twice. That's the game of life. I know Joel's already talked about some of the best aspects of the game of life, but I really want to give a unique, more personal perspective of why I think it's the greatest game of all time. You see, one of the biggest detriments to gaming is stress. Lots of us go through our days just, just compiling more and more stress. We, it, it, let's be honest. We enter board game nights sometimes carrying all that stress on our shoulders. And then lots of board games just add to it. Like you think, okay, last time I went for the weed strategy in this game. Did the weed strategy not work out because the, the dice rolls are bad or because I was just, just a bad strategy? Should I do that one again? Or were my, my opponent just lucky or last time for more combat and I lost? So should I go for more intrigue this time? Like lots of games just add all these decisions and these decisions just add more stress to your life. And it's just, we need to relax a little bit. So one of the things I love about the game of life is that when you start the game of life, you know, you can just take a deep breath and you know that nothing you do will have an effect on the outcome of the game. Like there's nothing you have to do. You just play the game. The game literally plays itself. It doesn't add stress. It doesn't add anger. It doesn't add frustration. It doesn't make you, you doubt yourself. Are you good at games? Are you bad at games? Like you can just relax and know I want to play the game of life and I can't affect it. There's nothing I can do to make it better or worse. The game is just going to happen to me. And you're just along for the ride. Along for the ride of the game of life. Thanks for watching the video. See you guys next one.